So uh, today we're going to be talking about like the future for the channel. So I wanted to pick your guys' brain a little bit and think about uh, what kind of commander themes that you guys would like to see on the channel. Commander themes? Yeah, you know, like we had the partner theme uh, soon to go up maybe. I don't know when this video gets put out, but we'll see. Mm -hmm. Uh, we had the most uh, overlooked commanders or something like that, too. Just this rapid fire and a, th a, th a couple out here. Yep. Uh, monocolor decks. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I mean, that'd be cool. Uh, all artifact decks. I don't know if everybody has an artifact deck, but yeah, all I artifacts, mean, all enchantments, yeah. maybe. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, I see that. Because there's different ways to go with each, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I like the monocolor, and especially if we can ever get, like, five people. Oh, yeah. Everybody's one. Yeah, everybody yeah. at least, like, everybody has at least one color kind of thing so like yeah that'd be cool yeah that, that way you see cool. the interaction between all five because you usually see four on like a youtube video but you don't see all five kind of going at it so yeah. or like and this is something me and some buddies did on untap like uh everybody picks a, a guild leader from ravnica and builds a deck builds around a, oh and build a oh, guild yeah. theme deck. Yeah. Guild, theme. Cool. guild theme decks yeah, that'd yeah. Be fun. Cool. i thought about something like that but with the three color combinations the uh the clan and Often the Tarkir. alara three color combinations oh, uh, so like picking like like clan mardu and building a whole deck themed about clan mardu or doing uh jund and building a whole deck mm -hmm. themed around jund or just whatever. be careful what clans you're bu building around. yeah just be careful which ones yeah. some of them are innately more powerful some than of mardu. them some of them are mono white some of them are mono white <laughs> and those clans are not fun no not at all <laughs> uh, i would like to do uh like heavy voltron decks voltron decks are fun Voltron yeah. heavy, yeah. Voltron heavy one. Voltron, I think I have. Yeah. I think I have a couple of Voltron. Let's decks I can let's see do. whose commander can connect first. Yeah. yeah. Who can twenty one um. shot? <laughs> who can who can uh, who can twenty one salute right to someone's face first? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that'd be kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be yeah. cool. I have some ideas. I mean, for those like watching behind the scenes, like I usually come up with like some of the ideas for the channel and kind of all that fun stuff. So like, one thing I thought of is like uh, like CDH light. Where we build like competitive decks, but they're not to the point of like hype, like super optimized. Yeah. So okay. we're kind of like, okay, this will this will win most games, kind of vibe. Mm -hmm. um, mm, okay. Okay. So yeah, something like that where we kind of show off our own little deck building as well as gameplay. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Uh, tribal. You know, like elves, dragons, merfolk, oh, yeah. nonsense, mirror, mirror, squids. 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 Only, yeah. only, frogs. only squids. Only frogs. Wait, yeah, I don't think there's a squid. Tribal. There's, there's definitely enough if you try hard enough. No, like I don't think that's a creature type. Squid. Squid, squid is. A, oh, yeah, it's hundred percent type. Yeah. Yeah. Octopus yeah. is. Yeah, I know octopus is. Squid. There's squid definitely is. a squid. They're the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> if no? you throw all caution to the wind, they're basically the same thing. Well, anyways, <laughs> that's pretty bad. I, I don't. I, I actually, I don't think so. But we, I could be wrong. But yeah, that'd be that'd be cool tribe. I think. Do I have a? I'm trying to think if I have more than one tribe deck because I know I have one, but I might oh, might be uh, Rin and Sari. Oh, okay. that one I did cats and yeah. dogs because okay. people I usually pick one or the other. Humans, goblins, vampires. Yeah, I have spirits. Oh my! Humans. Oh, my. <laughs> um, oh, that be, might be funny. Like a Wizard of Oz themed bear. What is it? Um, lions, tigers, and bears. Lions, tigers, and bears. You could use cats. Okay. Cats, but cats like and lions. bears. Yeah, you could do that because most same. of the lions in. Uh, in uh magic are cats yeah you can make a tribe out of that yeah you could do um, that 100 you could do that i also thought of like chaos decks like all four of us playing chaos decks i have so many chaotic decks right like i could play yidris and we just like warp world four times i could play vazi mm -hmm. um yeah i mean there's tons of like there's tons of deck types and i also want to do like individual videos for like us explaining deck types i think that would be cool um where like people can learn how we build those kind of decks so yeah. right kind of get like a general idea for the ins and outs exactly so austin can talk about tokens because austin i don't know why yeah no idea <laughs> yeah no idea why austin would do that Big one in a token video oh okay bro you're gonna fight me <laughs> all right um them's fighting words <laughs> and then we can always like commander's not limited to themes too so like we'll just play like we could play a, like a regular commander game yeah. and just be like oh yeah this is a, the commander i mean i don't know here's a couple other like ones um maybe do like favorite commander decks versus each other yeah, yeah. pick one of your favorite yeah, one is and play it pick or like all-time favorite first Ooh. Pick, like, oh. if you still have your first i definitely what, don't or whatever ones uh, like maybe like one of the earliest ones you have maybe i still do i've changed it around a little bit the commander is not the same anymore but it's still the same color identity what is your guys's first commander let's go on to that topic 
Uh, my first one was uh, Mono White, uh, the very first Odric. Oh, okay. uh, Master Tactician. Oh, God, I remember that one. Here's the problem. I don't remember. There's, wow. I know what my first three were. Okay. I don't remember which one was first. Okay. It was either Odric Lunark Marshal, Kalidus Traitor of Get, or wow. Omnath Locus of Rage. Oh, okay. I was going to say two mono colors and I, dual color. Yeah, that's pretty solid. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. solid start. Mine's, C- Mine's Sigarda, Host of Herons. Oh, like, yeah. Humans. Okay. Uh, yeah. Do you remember playing that? Yeah. Green, it, white, humans. Yeah. I remember feeling so excited to play Commander, and Austin, <laughs> Austin like, showed me how to build the deck and everything, and just uh, he just wiped me out. I Look. can never forget that. Just like, <laughs> oh, you're playing humans? This is my actually my anti-human deck. But, you know, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. I was just playing my zombie deck, and it had uh, uh, zombie apocalypse in it. it just, just Jason, showed up to, Jason showed up to the knife fight, and you pulled a 38 on him. It's right. insane. It's okay. I got my revenge. My Sigarda deck has Draft Digger's Cage. Oh, yeah. And, uh, oh, like, up. Angel of, uh, was it Angel of Hope? Yeah. Whatever it is. Or, no, Glo- Angel of Glory's Rise. That's what it yeah. is. Yeah, oh, okay. The one that comes in and exiles all zombies and then yeah. kill and then brings back all your humans. Yeah. That's, that's, that's it's awesome. It's all right. I got revenge for you. That's Good. Fine. I appreciate that's it. My my first one, I believe, was... So my first one, actually, you helped me put together. My first oh. one was Noyandar. Yep. Mm. It was a blue-white spell slinger deck that was all about turning my lands into creatures that I could swing at you with. Um, It's not quite the same deck anymore. Nope. It's definitely still a blue-white spell slinger deck, but the commander is Dragonlord Ojitai now. Uh. It's kind of okay. like a cool little... Oh, cool. What? My You can't really touch my commander unless I swing at you, but if I swing at you value true it's true still fine i mean yeah. I, my i have a green white build that's a similar to my first one uh but it's kyler instead mm-hmm. yeah so just okay. like super yeah. it just still yeah. humans just a little little beefier yeah i mean i could switch the guard in but i wouldn't kind of thing sure i mean yeah. that's the thing too like i mean yeah and that's the thing with like commander decks too is like you you find you see the cards and like you upgrade the deck so like whether it's upgrading the commander itself or upgrading cards in the I- deck I've got maybe one of the funniest, well, I don't know about funny, but one of the, like, the, the best stories around that topic. Go for it. Um, my, I had an Alesha deck. Like, you know, when I, well, that was one of my, that was also one of my early decks was an Alesha deck. Mm-hmm. Um, never really played very well because I built it very strictly around her ability mm-hmm. and I just, it never really popped off, never really did anything. Mm-hmm. So I ended okay. up kind of going, ah, Saskia comes out. I'm like, okay, I can kind of widen the theme now. I can make it a Saskia deck, add an extra color. Things would be great. That deck was a little better. Still kind of felt maybe meh. Yeah. And then Najilo drops. <laughs> and it's just like, oh, awesome. Five colors, make it all warriors. Just stick to the warrior theme. Now, So like it went from like three color to four color to five color. It just kept... That's awesome. It evolved. You know, yeah. yeah. Like, and that's, that's the thing. Is like I've done that. I think we've all probably done that. You know, where mm-hmm. we like, we're like, oh, yeah. I like this commander better than this one. Like, I'm going to switch the deck around a little bit and make it... Make it this commander yeah. instead. I actually I did that with Sorok Dragonclaw. When I first yeah. built that deck, it was Mina and Den. It was a red green landfall deck. And nine times out of ten, when I first played the deck, I was like, this is kind of cool, I guess. I don't know. It doesn't really feel that neat. And then I saw Sorok Dragonclaw. I think I traded someone for him. And I was like, yo, this is cool. And I built a whole deck around that. And now it is probably one of my like top three favorite decks to play just because yep. I just sneeze and it's like, oh, oops, my board's full of creatures. <laughs> Die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, stuff like that. It's fun. I had yeah. a similar but opposite thing. So I started with uh, Moldrotha and just bringing okay. stuff back from the grave. Like super basic, like fun kind of spore frog yeah. thing. And uh, and I was like, you know, like gross. this isn't. Yeah, fun. it is gross. <laughs> Turbo um, Fog. Turbo yeah. Fog's always fun. <laughs> right. But I was like, eh, this isn't really what I want to do anymore. And so I went from Sultai to Demir, and I just was like, okay, I, I built it into, um, man, I can't remember the commander at that point. I don't remember. It, it was basically a similar thing of Muldratha. You would bring, you would take the, uh, I want to say it's the rogues. Uh, oh, Anawan? No, not Anawan. The, uh, the, the froggy rogue. Sig. Oh, oh, Sig. Sig. Oh, oh, Sig. Sig. River yeah. Yeah. Right. And so then I, then Anawan came out. <laughs> Right. With the whole like precon of the rogues and everything, yeah, with the yeah. Rogue, so rogue tribal, pretty much. I bought that and I bought it for like fifteen bucks. Wow. Like and I was like, oh, this is this is a solid deck. All it needs is a couple cards, and I got like um, the Black Ascension mm-hmm. card that that gets every time a oh, card goes Blood Chief Ascension. Blood Chief yeah. Ascension. I pulled it as a list card, 
So that went straight in. I got Mind Crank and Mesmeric Orb and all these other little things. That's just like, oh, Mew. you got gross with it. Okay. Yeah, I got bad with it. <laughs> but then I, I still had this this uh, Sig deck that I had put together that I'd never played anymore. So I was like, man, I really like this deck. And so then I devolved it again to Mono Blue, and it made it a self mill still, but with Kyrie. And that mm -hmm. deck is, I love oh, that deck. Okay. And so that's the, like, the, you went backwards. I went down, yeah. yeah. Instead of five colors, I went to one. And sometimes that's the way it's got to go. Sometimes you got to add extra colors to make the deck, you know, kind of give it more pop and more flavor. Sometimes you got to hone in on what you actually really like about the deck and get rid of a color. Right. Yeah. I mean, hey. No, 100%. It's, it's all progression. No matter which way it goes. Zach started adding pegs to the board. Jason just took them out. <laughs> said, no, less colors. I need yeah. less. And that, I think that's the thing about Magic, too, is, like, it's all whatever you make it, especially yeah. Commander. Oh, yeah. Uh, you don't have to play this, like, super high competitive deck every turn. Um, and, like, in, I play Standard and Pioneer now, too. So, like, uh, and I'm actually looking to build a modern deck because mm. I have all the pieces for Mono Red Burn. I, too, hate so, having money. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Don't, don't I do, tell I my do wife. love driving myself into financial disparity. <laughs> yes, just ask my wife. She knows. Um, but uh, switching gears a little bit, going from Magic to like tabletop games. Okay. We talked about our first commander. What was your guys' first tabletop game? How do you define that? Like the first so, RPG? Like tabletop yeah. role-playing game. Yeah, tabletop role-playing game. Whether it's Call of Cthulhu, Dungeons & Dragons, Skyrim, the board game. I know it's a, it can't be Skyrim, the board game. Um, betrayal of Castle Hill. I would probably put that up there. The right? House on the Hill. House on yeah, the Hill. Betrayal of House on the Hill. I, I don't you know why that I a, you count that as a tabletop game? I don't, I don't say so. You're role playing a character like, and you're going through. I, I was thinking suppose. if you're saying like a, a tabletop role playing yeah, game, I'm, I, if, I would, I'm thinking more pen and paper. If you, yeah, if you're saying like, okay, so if you're saying more pen and paper. Okay, so how would we divide that? Is that just a board game a board at that game. point? Yeah. Yeah. But you're playing a character in that board game, a specific right, character. But true. But so you are you're huh. you're doing that in Clue. Okay. <laughs> That's kind of. true. No, I, I think <laughs> I think when it comes to tabletop, I think I think you're talking more of you like know, a pen and in Monopoly. Paper. I am the thimble. Okay, but that's the thing. You don't act as the thimble. The thimble doesn't give you any oh, more stats. Oh, contraire! Like in the game of life, there's no stats that you get for playing it. Like you don't play a character, sure. but in Betrayal, you play a specific character that has specific right. stats. So like, that's yeah, what I kind of think of it as I mean, a role-playing that. game. That's true, but I mean, you don't. I, I still play separate out your character it. Sure, you, play it. you could. Oh. So facts about to hit me with some facts. A couple of buddies of mine. We all got together. We played the uh, Baldur's Gate version of mm -hmm. uh, Betrayal. Okay. Right? Okay. And one of the characters, his name is uh, Grim, right? He's like a uh, orc barbarian or something like that. Okay. Right? Yeah. And so we all just we all just took on the role of our character, started doing the accents, right? <laughs> and he took on like an I am Groot kind of sort of uh, personality. So oh every time we'd God. ask him a question, he'd just look at look at us with all seriousness and go, Grim. Oh my god! Like that dude. one campaign with riffs, where I was the only one that could oh. understand you. Yeah, you know, oh yeah. My yeah, he would just yeah. my wolfen only knew like two languages, and one of them was not common. So you had to be my translator. I missed that campaign so much. That was fun. It was, it was actually so fun. really fun. Oh yeah, shout yeah. out to Talon. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I loved playing a six foot six bipedal wolf that only spoke in growls to anybody who didn't speak his language. Yeah, I think I was like a technomancer that like had yeah. laser rifles, and I was basically acting like Deadpool everywhere I went. We found, yeah, we it was found fun. a motorcycle. It was a lot of a lot of fun. Well, uh, so so if we're so I, what I would do is I would separate board games from tabletop game from like okay. tabletop like pen and paper like stuff. Pen and paper stuff. Okay. There so is pen and paper there stuff. is a bit of an in between. There are There's some things. It's a Venn diagram. Yeah, yeah, there are some things that kind of fit almost both. Yeah, that's a good analogy. Because like it's a Venn diagram. Like I'm not saying trouble and D and D are the same exact thing. You know, well, I mean, when you really break it down. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I'm really, I roll a, I roll a, I'm really feeling that red piece. I yeah, roll a dice and I'm in trouble. What's what's different? Right. <laughs> it's it's I mean, kind of one and the same. Yeah. Not wrong, you know? but, yeah. Okay. So dialing it back in. Let's, right. Yeah. So let's, so our let's first, look at both. Uh, yeah. Let's, our, do, let's do both. First yeah. board game. First and board game. First tabletop role yeah, playing. Ta uh, pen and paper. Yeah. Game. Pen and paper style. First yeah. pen and paper riffs with you guys. Oh, okay. That's cool. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Okay. I didn't know that was your first. That was my first. Very interesting. Yeah. Because we didn't play D and D at that point yet. No, not yet. No, yeah. no, I didn't with you. Nope. He didn't start in the campaign. I I know what yours is because we met yeah, Omar. We met Omar after that. And Omar was part of that first D and D campaign that I did with Nick. Oh, yeah. Okay. Remember? Did I, did I so 
it, it i can technically kind of answer your first because that was your first but not mine so austin's would have been the very first D game i ever dm'd for him it was you marco kyle and omar no again that can't be the first no that, was, we, that wasn't my first because one because that was, was after it was Grimworld. It was Grimworld with Emmanuel being the uh with the uh, Emmanuel being DM. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, I, huh? Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, no, I I played a uh in that game you have a little more like uh You have a little more variety. open endedness yeah, yeah, like, with characters. So he he let me make a uh uh what is it, a druid that uh the whole pa- his whole uh, identity was that it was one of those uh situations where like uh raised by wolves like you're found as a kid or whatever. Uh-huh. But in that world he allowed me to make this uh this tribe of bees that were like humanoid bees yeah right i know it's a little it's crazy it's i know some yeah however like there was literally like in these mountains shaped like like beehives and everything else and like his whole power is he he was able to turn into a bee he's able to uh he had a gourd on his back with a shillelagh made of like 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 a steel shillelagh mm-hmm. and he put it in the game i know and, and like i i pulled like I, like mind you the 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 gourd on my back that i was holding it in like a sheath mm-hmm. was full of honey so nice. like when i'd pull it out i could like fling it on someone and then cast bees at them and it would deal extra damage it was gruesome it was really gruesome i came out with a lot of lore for that i made up different names using like latin things and different everything else i was i went hard in the paint on that i was just like emmanuel oh. emmanuel gave you a hundred percent creative freedom with that character and you took it and ran with yep. it so <laughs> it was good it Goodness, was great i played briefly yeah. in that campaign yeah. and it was great yeah. It was so, so funny. So the D&D campaign that you did with me, Nick, Marco, Kyle, all that, I was there for that. I mean, mind you, I was yeah. only there for the second yeah, session. You, no, you, so you joined in later. You joined yeah. in at yeah. session four. It was not nearly no. that. No. Yeah. Was it four? It was when you got you guys had already gone to the Abbey and dealt with the vampire spawns in the Abbey, and then you went to the first major city, oh. and that's where you met Zach's character. But that was literally like session two. No, we were already two sessions. That probably might have been session three. No, he, it was three then. It yeah, because well, we were already session yeah. two. Okay. We were already okay. two sessions but, into that campaign. But we played rifts before. Cause we played yeah. rifts when Kalen. When, um, Kalen. When Kalen was running it. I was trying to think of the store. The uh, gamers. Oh yeah. No, it wasn't. No, gamers. no gamers. it was um. The one uncanny. after. Uncanny. Uncanny. Nope. Before uncanny. Was no, it was uncanny. It was uncanny. It had to have been right uncanny. by right by Epic. Yeah, it was yeah. uncanny. Yeah, it had to have been uncanny. Mike's store. No, before uncanny was uncanny. It was the collector's exchange. I, I thought we played in there when it was still a collector's exchange. Collector's exchange. Dead. Like maybe not, but I, I wait. thought it was with Mike. I wait, wait, wait. Was collector's exchange with? The guy the and the girl, yeah, yeah. The couple. yeah. So he's right. He is yeah, right. So it had to have been collected. Oh. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Okay. Wow. You remember that way better than me. Yeah. I, I usually have yeah. pretty decent memory, at least yeah, when it comes to garbage. tabletop stuff. That's right before I left to go play poker. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because you dropped right. off the face. Of the earth. Yeah. You fell off the face of the <laughs> earth for like yeah. a while. Well, I, I think I told you. Yeah. And, then- <laughs> and yeah, because I literally like got got the deal and to go play. This is a whole other thing for another time. <laughs> I got the deal, and then within a week, I like told my boss at Publix, I'm like, peace out, dog. Yep. You guys suck, um, and all that. And uh, the whole thing with they're like, well, we're not going to we're not gonna like fire you. You're going to have to quit. And I was just like, I'm not going to quit. I'll just keep showing up for once a week. Did I ever tell you about that? Mm-hmm. So We don't have to do it all yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah, we could do it another that time. Be another that's that's time. the whole other thing. That yeah. was a fun fun thing to learn for you kids anyways um but yeah like it, i remember collector's exchange yeah. and then coming back when i came back like less than a year later yeah. that's when that mike was there yeah, yeah. And, was and i was like what happened he, he, he was the goat <laughs> yeah he was he cool was mike, was, mike he still is the goat mike yeah. is, mike was super dope yeah, yeah. that story was super great. cool uh, so that was, was yeah. shout out mike shout, yeah, out, shout mike. out mike shout out mike from uncanny comics you're the goat you have a goat, bro. You probably don't watch these. But <laughs> still <laughs> shout out. I hope he still does. shout out. Anyway. I used to watch his Twitch. Yeah. So no, I watch his streams every now and again. That was yours. That was yours. Jason, what was yours? So mine is kind of like basic. Okay. Um, so we, uh, there is at uh, Gamers, mm-hmm. one of my first times going, and it was like pen and paper. You, It was just basic like, oh, hey, write down this like superpower that you want. You wrote down a superpower. And then you would play a campaign like a, like as like that superhero. And it was just super simple. It was a one shot. And then I got into that was just with um I can't remember his name. I think his name is Joey. Um mm-hmm. 
Yeah, Joey and them and like that whole group of people. Yeah. And like I didn't really hang around them a whole lot, but I was in gamers like waiting for magic to start and they're like, Hey, you wanna play D and D, but it's not really D and D, it's super simple. And I was like I think I remember it was it was called something like Shen Wu or Shen Mu yes, or something like that. Yes. I think we played that too. Like but I definitely like, didn't play that. I don't remember playing that. Well you you might have been drafting actually. Probably. <laughs> um it was a real problem. We were pretty heavy in the oh, draft dude. back then. But I mean, we drafted all I the think time. I was definitely in a session of that. I don't count that. Yeah. Because, I mean, that's still, that's pretty like. But, I mean, right after really, that, really I late. joined but... Rob's campaign in D&D. Mm. And so, like, that I would consider, like, a first official. But Shen Wu was literally, like, the first introduction to all it. And now, when I, like, s- start playing D&D with people, that's how I get people introdu- introduced mm. to, like, the idea of rolling dice to see what happens yeah and keeping it very simple for them so they get the idea of like oh this is how this is kind of done and then they kind of get a better idea of like oh he's asking me to roll this d20 which are i need i need to do that but now i need to add this number to what my role is mm-hmm. and so they kind of build the building blocks and that helped me learn how to play and not only learn how to play but learn how to dm as well mm-hmm. yeah you kind so. of pick up on some of that as you're playing but yeah what about you so Mine's a little hazy because it was very, very long ago. Um, it was in like my, I want to say my freshman year of high school. I had a buddy who had been playing D&D for a while. He was very, very heavy in the 3.5 edition. 3.5 okay. edition, a lot of people will tell you, is like the best edition of D&D to play. Yeah. Eh, I kind of agree. It gets a little more mathematically complicated sure. in 3.5 edition D&D, but the customization is a lot more open-ended for the most part. Yeah. Um, I had played, I had joined in to a campaign. This wasn't like I didn't start out with it. I got told, hey, by the way, um, if you want to join, uh, the party's already level six. Uh, you need to think about what you want to play or whatever. And I was just like, I want to do like in and out, like big damage in and out kind of combat style. And he's like, okay. So he set me up with a thief rogue, yep. a level six thief rogue. And I joined into this party and this party already had like a wizard. I don't remember what they were. I remember there was like, we were like four people in for this party. I was the fifth member added to this party. And I remember we were playing through briefly and it was cool in the beginning it was kind of uh like a pretty story rich campaign at least i can tell like my buddy had put a lot of thought and effort into the campaign and like we kind of jumped into it and started playing and it was cool and all and i think i remember there was like some kind of drama between like the dm and one of the players mm, uh, one of the players was like i think i think the player was like his wife or like his girlfriend or whatever there was like something going on outside of the game between two of them or whatever it is eventually ended up being the dm being like hey we're not we're not running this anymore like we're, we're done mm. and we were like what, what what's going on and yeah he just he told somebody else in the group and that person didn't tell me but they told me like yeah it's it's messy i'm like gotcha okay yeah. cool Word. and it just kind of kick-started me going forward um i jumped in more campaigns and played from there eventually as you two know obviously eventually i then took up the mantle of wanting to dm mm-hmm. and even now like just last night i uh, started a new campaign that I'm running for some of my friends online. It's another custom setting sort of thing, or whatever. But judging from the first session, they sound like they love it so far, and it yeah, makes me optimistic awesome. to run more. That's awesome. Well, um, well, maybe we'll get into like board games, like favorite or first board games another time. Cause yeah, I, I have another question along these lines. Okay. Uh, if you guys could choose uh, a board game or a tabletop role playing game to play on the channel. And you have to DM it though. That's the thing. You have to DM it. Okay. Which, which one are you rolling with? Can, can I can I start? Because I, I already have I'm an not answer. gonna stop you. Me? <laughs> Personally? Austin just jumps across the table. <laughs> <laughs> Say no more. <laughs> no. Uh, me personally, and I mean you guys already kind of know. Um, Call of Cthulhu. Yep. I yeah. am so in love with Call of Cthulhu's system. Mm. Seventh edition specifically. The older editions are kind of cool, but Seventh edition for me, easily probably one of my favorite settings. I love um, gothic, you know, Lovecrafty and horror stuff like mm-hmm. that. I kind of like how the book kind of helps hold your hand and like, oh, do you want to take Lovecrafty and horror and put it in the modern times? Yeah. Uh, do you want your cell phone to be bugged with Cthulhu's children and you can't call people anymore? Otherwise, you're gonna slowly slip into madness. You can do stuff like that. It's super cool. Call Cthulhu is a cool system that kind of introduces horror in a really cool way and me personally i love writing horror settings like that i try to incorporate those in D D at times and it's a little difficult 
just because people know it's kind of a numbers game when it comes to D&D, and they're like, big scary monster? Cool. How many hit points does it have? In Call of Cthulhu, you don't know because you, the player, are like, oh, I only have nine hit points. If that thing breathes on me, I'll die. Mm. Mm-hmm. I very much love the horror setting of Call of Cthulhu. I love how in-depth and kind of like, as you two know, because you've played in one yeah. of my Call of Cthulhu games, the fear can really get set in there with certain settings, and it's it can get a little intense at times, and it's a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. I, I do want to uh, do a little shout-out real quick to you, because uh, as, as Zach can attest to oh my god. uh back w- i know bro i know <laughs> oh my god kiss you on the forehead or something <laughs> huh? uh, so oh, you no. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no literally so so there was a while ago when we played our first our first uh call of cthulhu game and like you know we sat down for it and this is before chris joined obviously this is yeah just this whenever... is before we it was just me and you i think was it just me it was Savannah? No, that's Savannah. No, 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 no Chris, Chris had to have been. Chris. Yeah, Chris had to have been. Sorry, no, it, was you two, it was you two and Chris in the beginning, and right. then Savannah joined later. Right. So, so yeah, so we, we started that, and, like, just the way that you set up that campaign, and just the way that you set up, like, because at the, at, the, at the time, I was just like, oh, yeah, I don't really know, too. I know about Cthulhu. I've, I've read the book, and, you know, like, not the whole thing, but, like, a decent amount of it, and, like, I've done my research and everything, but, like, whenever you set up that world... I'm pretty big in the horror and like there's some some stuff that doesn't really get me but like when there, there was a part where he uh, he had a uh, uh, an entity or a group of entities called the black eyed children which is a, a real thing yeah it's a real thing in the west he had the it, west coast he had like a uh, what, what is it like a cliffhanger ending for the first it was the first session yeah it was the first session yeah. with them knocking on the window of our apartment and the way he set it up with playing the music and everything else legit sent chills down my spine like I've never had in like that that like setting before and I was just like oh my god <laughs> like yeah. so props to you if we can do if we can do another uh, Call of Cthulhu session on, on here I would be so excited hey, yeah I'm all for it yeah. honestly I'm down still you can you can definitely do a Call of uh, I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> gonna say it. <laughs> you're not gonna say the acronym. I'm not it's the here. You're acronym not. Acronym of Call of Cthulhu. Not you're, saying you're it. Not, you can look it up. You can. It's it's not hard to figure it's out. Not hard <laughs> to, it's not hard to figure out. You know how to spell C O C. Anyway. Anyways. <laughs> what about you, Austin? Uh, mine's very short because uh, I do want to do this. And uh, if Pete's actually watching this, he actually messaged me earlier about this. I want to run a JoJo role playing game. Uh, and I think it would be very fun. This, the system is a uh, is a custom system by I don't actually remember their names, but it was a Twitter group, and we mm. found I found it on accident. Looked up the rules and thought it was amazing, and uh, so I, I would actually love to do that on here. I think it'd be cool, and I also have Pete on here because sounds yeah, yeah, it sounds like Pete's a very cool guy. That'd be dope. Zach, you got one. Uh, I got two though. One of them eh, so so. So the one that's kind of so so is a uh, Cyberpunk. Uh, okay. Cyberpunk Red. Um, oh okay. Yeah. It's. The only reason I say I'm so-so about that one is because I don't actually know how that works. Mm. Uh, I have the rule book. I've been reading through it, but I don't really know how to play it fully. Okay. So that one is kind of like, I obviously wouldn't be well-equipped to run it. Yeah. The one I am well-equipped to run, and I do want to run for the channel, is uh, Firefly. Yeah. Um, because it's very... Uh, having read through it and having kind of looked at it, it's very different from a lot of systems. Um, it's very... Easy. I would say very, like very simple to grasp and very like kind of, it's very much driven on like social interactions and sort of like just like people talking to each other mm-hmm. and just making decisions and stuff like that and then like when it really comes down to it going okay no now we need to roll so who gets to play Nate's and Philly? Uh, no one Dang you have it. to make your own character Dang you have it. to make your own yeah. Nathan Philly. I'm gonna name my character Philly and Nathan so there you go Philly and Nathan Faith and Nillian <laughs> yeah why'd you call him why'd you call him Faith and Nillian Faith and Nillian <laughs> Faith and Nillian <laughs> <laughs> Terry McGinnis. No, Terry so, McGinnis. I mean, you I can't love, come up with names. Steal them from TV shows. I, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I love that setting. Uh, I love, mm-hmm. and then, like, so it's to me, it'd be really fun to play around in. And yeah. then, uh, you've you've explained the system just before, and you were explaining it to me when you told me you wanted to run it, and I was like, yeah. that sounds cool. Like, yeah, it, it's super neat. I mean, like some of the the mechanics that they have in there, like the uh, the plot points. Yeah, and, and they work. Not entirely on like Divinity or um, Destiny dice from uh-huh. uh, for Kojin. Kojin. Okay, they're different, but they work in a similar way, and they're kind of neat. And but the way you earn them is also kind of like you have full control. Gotcha. You know, mm, like okay. you you don't start out well. Typically, you don't start out with any, and you just you earn them, and that's pretty interesting. Well, okay. Um, what about you? About me. 
So I'm typically the DM out of most of my friend groups, right? Like yeah. I DM the campaign, the D and D campaign, and the cogent roleplay campaign, and all that. And I DM for the channel already. Well, we'll fix that. Um, right. We <laughs> just we just are we just in. We have well, we exactly. had a month. I tell exactly. you what, if you don't want to answer the question of what you'd like to like dream DM, what would you like to dream play? Well, that's easy. Oh, yeah. That's super easy to play. I'd like to play Dungeons and Dragons so I can break the campaign. Because that's what I do. Fair. Um, yeah, as you but, usually do. But um, to DM, I thought about it. So I, I actually wrote my custom like tabletop game mm. a while back when we were at Gamers. Yeah, um, I remember that. Called Demons and Demigods. Demons and Demigods. Yes, I, I do remember that. that. Yeah, and we I was... made the joke about also calling it D and D, and then we said we can't do that. Yeah, <laughs> you'll get it already sued. Exists. Yeah, like super. I was super excited. D &D. I still have the book that I wrote everything yeah. in, uh -huh. and I that's typed crazy. it up as well. So like. And like the premise of it is like you choose a pantheon and you you are a like a, de a yeah. demigod from that pantheon and you get sucked into this world to like fight against demons and other pantheons and so on. So like imagine God of War but in a tabletop role playing set setting for your own vibe. Yeah, I remember ancient I told Greece is a guy. Yeah, yeah, I remember. I remember. I told Jason what pantheon I wanted to do, and I remember I was like, "That's sick." I, I told him I said I want to do the Egyptian pantheon, and I wanted to do Bastet. And he and like Nick literally was like, "I want to do the Egyptian." And I was like, "Well, they weren't in the game originally, but I guess I'll go make." And I literally went through and I researched it, and I made like eight different demigod planes for each. Uh, like a uh, pantheon that you could choose yeah, from, and, he and included like, like Ra and Horus and yeah. Osiris and Bastet. So and, like, like I, I was like that one. I want to be the cat goddess. Like <laughs> you know how like a, the player's handbook has like the opening and like you have the like how each player or how each character build is right. set up. Like I literally wrote a notebook full of like this is each pantheon setup. This is each character setup. This is each mm -hmm. blah blah blah. And like yeah, like a hundred and fifty pages. Of yeah, this Jason got very filled. in depth with this, and I've never DM'd it. We've never played it, and it just sits on my shelf, crying to me. Yep. Well, we have to um, play it sometime. Then. Years years yeah. later, I just thought of an anagram or I just thought of an acronym for it. Go for it, Dad. 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 Maybe. Dad. Maybe. You, you can't do D and D, or else we'll get slammed into the slammer call for life. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's for the Patreon. We can say the acronym uh, on the Patreon. Dand, maybe. Dand. Dan? I still like Dad. I mean, I, I know you do. But... Dad. <laughs> Dad. <laughs> Dad. <laughs> um, the other one is Riffs. I'd love to like hmm. learn it. Yeah, and, Riffs like, was a cool system. Playing get back it. into it. Riffs I'd love cool. to. I'd love to play it, but nobody like. I don't want to put the pressure on to DM to anybody else. That's why I became a DM. Really, is because I was like. I like that ambivert where I'm like I can talk to people and I can, but I'm I like to be by myself. So like I have that mix. So when yeah. it comes to like putting somebody else in that seat, I'm like I'll just do it. I'll learn how to DM, and then that's how I did it. I was just like, yeah, I'll DM. Yeah, you and, just said whatever. Yeah, I'll do and it. And then like my the, uh, like group of guys I was playing with at the time, they were like, do you, have you DM before? And I was like, no, but I'll figure it out. And we did, and we had a great time. And they're like, oh, you got to do this again. And then we did it again and again. And we completed our first campaign. It was like now as an adult, that's like unheard of because every time we get halfway through campaign, something schedule wise happens. Scheduling like, conflict, yeah. Yeah. somebody dies. Yeah. 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 That'd be the extreme. <laughs> Bro, case. what? Where That'd be that? the extreme case of that it. was out of but Nick field. just went. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man, we're getting old, bro. We're getting up there. <laughs> bro, chill. Wow. But there's all kinds I'm the of oldest things. one in this room, chill. <laughs> By a couple You're months. close to death. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, as nowadays, it's like, it's hard because it's like yeah. scheduling conflicts yeah. or any sort of just life yeah. slamming the bologna sandwich in your face. Exactly. And, just... and you have to, you have to adapt to it. Like you can't yeah. just say like, yeah. oh, well you didn't show up. So like you can't come back like it's like come on dude like, yeah don't, don't stuff do happens person. but i mean again with, even with our camp D, D campaign we've had, we take it's kind of taken a back seat to a lot of other things we've had going on yeah, yeah. Right. uh which i mean again it happens it happens so but we'll get like it's easy to pick up where we left yeah, off too we'll get the ball rolling easily um, and i'm excited to see how you guys hunt down the other knights and so on yeah and if you try and land a house on them again you know, I'll do it. Yeah, every don't, single don't time. Um, <laughs> Gidrius, Gidrius will land that house Gidrius. on top of someone. Yeah, I, I'm, I, I'm glad that like I can make games that have fun, and like the whole point of a D and D game is to tell a fun story. To, in my opinion, yeah, I like to tell a fun story. While like Call of Cthulhu is like, well, here's a 
the horror story. Yeah. It's yeah. a deep story. Yeah. So yeah, deep, yeah. D and D is a bit more of like a fun, like kind of open ended fantasy adventure story. Whereas Call of Cthulhu is like a deeper story. That's like, hey, do you want to be reminded about your crushing mortality? Right. Exactly. This is the system for you. Yeah. Yeah. And like, then you have Cogent, where just like it's all about role play and it's all about whatever you want to go for. Like, go for it, yep, kind of thing. Bring out it. your bed knife, bro. Yeah. Let's get it. Exactly. Bring out your bed. Don't but worry. Like, I'll bring my bread knife so you guys can see it. Bed knife. My bread. My bread knife. You said bread knife. My bed knife. Anyway, I'll bring my bread knife too. <laughs> um, cool. But yeah, and like, I feel like we can. This is a whole like whole <laughs> tavern talk in itself of like comparing the other tabletop games. Mm. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. like. Uh, like I just had a tavern talk with George not too long ago of like comparing D and D to cogent role play. Mm -hmm. And like, I've, I've played campaigns where like, they're super into it where they're like, we role play every little aspect of this campaign and we want to either lose or die or win, whatever it may happen. We want to go buy it. Mm -hmm. And then I, I run a lot of campaigns where just like, so what do you want to do? Okay. You want to build a flying house, build a flying house. Keep bringing you, me up like that. You want to make a, a secret trade company? Make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, nobody knew it was you until you started doing Shut that. <laughs> um, stuff like yeah, that, where it's just like, like yeah. and I, I enjoy stuff like that. And then if people want to dive into role play, they dive into yeah. role play. That's but, why I got into DMing. All my friends want to play, but nobody wants to DM. So I was like, okay, I'll do it. Yeah. And, um, and our, our last little topic for tonight is uh, video games. Right, we don't get in, we don't have a lot of video games on the channel right now as of recording this. We, right now, we don't right have now. Any. We, we have, yeah, it's not, we don't, <laughs> you're, yeah. you're right. Right, we have none. <laughs> we have we don't have a whole lot, but we'll get there. We'll get there. Baby steps, um, Jason. <laughs> but and last, but the last tavern talk we talked that's like almost exclusively what we talked oh, about yeah. was we like video about. games and the, our first yeah. and favorites. What are some video games that you guys want to play on the channel? Specifically, what video games would you want to play with the group on the channel? Oh, that's easy for me. Ooh, you can go for. I'm still. Easy. I gotta think. The quarry. What is that? Yes. The quarry. Yes. So the quarry is a. I get. I. I want to say storytelling. It is a storytelling, but it's oh, like wait, a, we talked about. Yeah, this, it's right? an interactive. Until dawn? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, like until it's dawn, from the yeah. same people who made Until Dawn. It is an interactive um, movie experience, is what I would call the game. Yeah. Okay. You essentially take on the role of different characters throughout the course of the story. The biggest driving point for the game is that. Uh, choices you make along the story mm. have a huge impact on the story's outcome. Like and injustice. even the outcomes are some of the... Yeah, yeah, just like Until Dawn. No, no, I said Injustice. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, 100 yeah, yeah, 100%. Just like Injustice. Yep, just like you Injustice. Have, you get to play as the Flash, and if you play all the way through as the Flash, different storylines happen. Different storylines happen. Just like, yep, just like with... Yeah. The, no, but <laughs> it's, it's a cool game. It's definitely a game. Um, The game is actually kind of meant to be played on a couch with friends it is, right yeah. it's kind of you, you have a whole thing where you can sit there and experience it kind of like watching an actual horror movie you know where you're screaming at the screen telling players or telling characters not to do something specific yeah. and then they do it anyway and you go god they are so stupid why they do that for sure it's cool i definitely that's a game i definitely would want to play on the channel just 100%. because i can't wait to see the handful of stupid decisions some of us i am gonna, gonna cry which actually it, it's, it's actually a cool because even if you've already played the game there's so much for people who haven't played it and yeah. like even if you are have already played it guaranteed you already missed stuff yep no, it's, 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 it's a very like decently not decently it's really good it's really well made so yeah. like it's I, I i love it first playthrough i think was like 11 11 hours i think and even then it was just like hey by the way there's stuff you missed and i went yeah. what there's stuff i missed well, of course, there's stuff I miss. It's like Until Dawn. Until yeah. Dawn has so many yeah. different outcomes for things that can happen. Butterfly you got to see them all. Yeah, yeah the butterfly mm -hmm. effect. You got to see them all. So I have two. One is really silly that I don't know how people are going to like. And one is like just a reminisce of and what we've already talked about. Uh, League of Legends is like reminisce. I would love to like, okay. like get on Discord with you guys again. Is that the silly one? No, no, no. Oh, that's boy. the reminiscent one. I sure would like to get okay, rage this... at a video game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, I think it'd be, like, it's just, like, nostalgic for us, too. Like, that's one of the, like, reasons we are so close. Is What was that? It wasn't Discord, right? We it got... Was, it was Smite. Uh, not Smite. It was a uh, Curse. Curse. That's yeah, what the program was. And curse. And then Curse turned into Twitch, right? Like, something like that? Mm, mm -hmm. No. No, Curse is still a thing. 
No. It's just know. nobody really uses it. No. Oh, I thought Cur- Curse was bought out by Discord. Oh, that that's what might have been. been. I think it was. It was bought out by something because we all switched to something yeah, else. Because it then... turned into it. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, you're probably right. Yeah. So, yeah. But anyways, that just as like, fun. it was fun. And now that I'm married, I have like the like idea of like we play we're playing it and just like mm-hmm. how my mom would come in in the middle of a game yelling at us I like through like she would yell at me and be like go to sleep i feel like my wife would do the same she's like what are you doing awake at three in the morning you know um so that would be fun for me i don't recommend that but no. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um and then the the silly one is um minecraft but with mods so like okay. different mods and mm-hmm. stuff so yeah. like just having like being goofy about it and like i i used to love like pixelmon like playing pokemon yeah, through minecraft right. yeah yeah okay. so like silly stuff like that or like doing an actual minecraft challenge it's like because minecraft never dies like it's always like no even you know. to this day it's still crazy popular right but minecraft. yeah i think those two minecraft never changes i think those two would be fun <laughs> do you want to go next zach or i don't even have an answer honestly cool uh xcom I would Ooh, love to play oh XCOM. My now, mind you, it is not oh, it is not the- meant to be played as a multiplayer game. However, right. uh, as mostly everyone at this table, I'm pretty sure everyone at this table, uh, I when, every single time I play it, I always uh, make each uh, each playthrough very personal to me, and I kit out literally the characters to look exactly well, as, as close as I can anyway to the to the characters uh, or to my friends and stuff like that so like we'll be going through and, and I'll play a whole campaign just literally just, just my friends and be like no Nick died Nick why aren't you shooting like, <laughs> Nick why did you have a 95% chance to hit and, and still miss <laughs> Nick's just yeah, yeah, pretty much. Do yeah. you know? XCOM would be really cool to play. Yeah, just we, so we I talked could about it. Yeah, yeah. And I'm totally down. I, I own because it'd be because it'd be cool. The second one. It'd be cool in a way because like each of us would take control of right. ourselves, and then, right? And you'd run around and do stuff. We'd it, have to actually coordinate, right? But then like, so you get multiple characters, right? But then like, you can add more people to your group. Obviously, you, I know you, you yeah. guys have played. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. Played it. I played it. Okay, so yeah, so for people at home uh so you get the four people and then you get extra characters what we could do is or at least it's what we talked about we can split it up to where like these are our f- fully under our control the extra ones all of us have to have to decide we all have to come to a consensus to be like okay we're like obviously yeah. a quick consensus but like yeah you know yeah hey, i need that guy over there to like do overwatch or something if he dies we're not like we're still gonna be sad about it but like right. not as sad as like you know it's yeah. if all four of us are just like one of those guys is a shapeshifter i ain't, I ain't going up there Send him up there. <laughs> yeah. True, true, true. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. I, I would love to scream at myself on the screen. Yep. Yeah, I'm definitely down to be like, why did you throw that grenade? Yeah. yeah. Why did you have a 92% chance to land with the grenade and you missed? Yeah. yeah. That'd Still be cool. One? Gosh, I don't really know, man. Like, yeah. There's uh, so yeah. many. I honestly don't know. Yeah, I mean, because, like, honestly, some of them, I'm just thinking about, the, like, the logistics of them, and it's just, like, I don't know if any of them really make sense. Hmm. You know, um, okay. just different games. Like which oh. ones? Like which ones we don't honestly. So Zach's like, vote is Fortnite. Hell no! Oh, nah. <laughs> hell no! No, I'll just be playing Shoot Fortnite. Shoot a guy in a tower gets built. Hell no! No, <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, I mean, I, I guess just like snap, uh, you know, snap answer here, like uh, the council. Okay. okay. It's, okay. Yeah, it, I can see that. It's a. Uh, you guys know it. Yeah. Yeah. I know it because of you. Yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. That's, I know it because of you. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's a game that I I saw advertisements for on Steam because it was like on my Steam recommended, and I'm like, what the hell is this? And then I played it, and I still have no idea what the hell. Because <laughs> that game was just like <laughs> that game. You thought you knew where it was going. You thought it's like, oh, this is Illuminati. Like, okay, they're trying to decide the fate of the world, and then they're all a bunch of rich people and aristocrats and stuff and then like that game takes a hard left and you're like what the hell is going on it's i will say it's not the best game it's not very well optimized like, the graphics kind of yeah yeah that's the thing yeah. the, the graphics kind of take some hits here and there the gameplay takes some hits here and there but honestly it's it's such an interesting game like an interesting concept it could yeah. be like like a like a b version of the quarry you know? yeah <laughs> yeah kind of yeah i could see that all right no, that'd be cool well um like we try and finish off every tavern talk, let's hit the lightning round, guys. Yeah, all right. So these are rapid fire questions, and then just uh, go as fast as you can, and then I'll answer after. Um, all right, favorite board game. Favorite board game. I'd say, off the top of my head, recently the Dark Souls board game. Okay. That one's definitely that. my favorite. I had so a lot of fun with that one. Uh, Scythe. Yep, Scythe's a good one. 
You? I go last. That's oh, the, the okay. Whole, sorry. That, my that's bad. how this uh, works. Yeah. Uh, if I had to choose one, uh, Binding of Isaac. If Binding you count Isaac. that. Yeah. Okay. That's a good one. Uh, mine is lame. I like Monopoly a ton. Like, I actually enjoy playing Monopoly. Well, really? Yeah, I'm a psychopath. I know. A control player till the very end. <laughs> Can't believe him. What um, a stacks player. Yeah. What a <laughs> stack. Literally, what See, a stacks player. that's where player. it comes from. That's yeah. where it comes from. I love playing Monopoly for eight hours. Oh <laughs> I just have so many. I have a ton of memories that are a that's lot fair. of fun. But uh, favorite dessert. Favorite dessert? Oh, okay. I'm torn between two, but I'll go with the first one that came to mind: tiramisu. I think it was like apple crumb cake or something like that. I forget the specific name for it, but I think okay. it's no, something, my, good, something my mom used to make. Okay, still does. Well, uh, I don't. I believe they're called uh, molten lava cakes. Yeah, yeah. 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 Those, lava cakes. those things destroy me but like <laughs> boy is it like the bet like it's one of those situations where it's just like you know uh like uh it's a guilty pre- present pleasure. no yeah. present austin's just like this is future austin's problem and then, <laughs> and then future, son, future pro- austin is just like why <laughs> <laughs> yeah, future austin says oh god i'm dying yeah. yeah but yeah okay my wife loves those um favorite dessert for me is a is a toss-up between just regular ice cream, where I like, I'm like super bland, like I don't care what it is, but it tastes super good, or uh, blueberry cobbler, like oh, a dude, nice I blueberry, love cobbler. blueberry cobbler. I love blueberry like as a whole, so like the, and the, with the cobbler. Yeah. Oh man, I love blueberry. Um, favorite cereal? Keep on the food a little bit. Favorite cereal? Easy. Honeycomb. Really? Top notch. Wow. Easily my favorite cereal. I do have a second, which is blueberry. Love blueberry cereal. Okay. So Nick's got a whole ranking. Toss up between Fruit Loops or Frosted Flakes. Okay, they're so. right. <laughs> I have a. Uh, I have Please a, don't copyright us. No, <laughs> uh, no, I have a, a, a very hot take. Uh oh. I hate cereal. Well, there's not a single cereal I like. And this is Austin's well, last time on the podcast, guys. Well, Austin, it was nice knowing you. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> it was great having you on here. I'm so glad you could join us for yep. this series. Yeah. Cause I love cereal. Like I literally have a rotation of cereal at my house and my wife thinks I'm insane, but I literally rotate between, and this is, uh, hear me out. Uh, chocolate, mm-hmm. fruity, beige. Sure. Those okay. are the, those are the two, three categories. I mean, you are insane. You want to get into modern. So yeah, I am. I am very <laughs> insane. Trust me. But yeah. beige is like your honey nut Cheerios, your honeycomb, frosted flakes. Yeah, they're you're... all like the same. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Color. Um, and I'm colorblind, so a lot of things are beige, guys. <laughs> but <laughs> um, my favorite, my favorite cereal is Reese's Puffs. Hey, like, I love okay. Reese's Puffs. Eat them so, up. Yeah. yeah. Shut up. <laughs> Just shut up, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right, we'll shift gears here a little bit. Uh, favorite school subject. That's. Oh, that's tricky for me because it's kind of what my major is right now in college, which is chemistry. Okay. I love chemistry. Yeah. Solid. Everybody who knows me knows what my answer is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, we know, but why don't you math. tell our viewers? It's the Crusades. Come <laughs> it's on. A, mm, I don't know if that's a subject. That's <laughs> no, a way of life. It's a, <laughs> <laughs> that's a state of mind. That's baby. a state of mind, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got the Deus Volts on my oh knuckles. My you know? oh, <laughs> no, uh, oh no, his, history. I love history. history. Yeah. I mean, to, I mean, mind you, they didn't teach military history in, in school, but like. They did. But you just well, it was more like was that selective. was like that was like an afterthought. Like they would yeah. teach you the war about the wars, but like you no, really I mean, had to dive in on your own. No, the military you know? history in school, I feel like, was selective. I mean, yeah, you had to be part of ROTC. Like, sure, that, sure, they did that. That was like a whole block of like. ROTC, yeah, the, yeah, so. it was. Sure. Yeah, but, but, but yeah. history in general, yeah, I definitely yeah. is. My, Most of my history stuff that I know or remember is purely because of Zach. Nice. So. Uh, astronomy or any space science? Mm, okay. Mm. I hot love take, space. Hot take. I hate space. That's okay. Like not even like I and just like a ton of people know that like when it comes to space theme things or like sci-fi esque things, I just don't like them. But um, <laughs> well, I hate to break it to you, bud. You're kind of surrounded by it. I know. Listen, I know. everybody has an opinion, even if it's incorrect. I know. Exactly. Um, but my favorite subject uh, was calculus. No, just kidding. Ooh, I'm not whoa. that much of a psychopath. I was gonna say. Um, it's tough. I I really enjoyed psychology, 
when it came to like okay. learning about right. how people like thought Pretty and good. different like thought process through yeah. that. Okay. And then on the other aspect, I really like U.S. history and stuff like that has always been like passion for me. Like I got to be a teacher's aide and teach people. Like of like I got this whole block that. Um, you guys went to South Lake. You guys know yeah. Mr. Underwood. Yeah. 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 Oh, I yeah. love Mr. Underwood. Yeah, he, like, Mr. he wrote Underwood. me a, like a uh, college. Um, reference page and everything like and the like, dissertation what, yeah what recommendation you know? yeah recommendation yeah. and so he's like yeah this, and he like i was his teacher aide so i he, i got to teach all like the the 1960s so i got to teach like oh, the jfk assassinate okay. I, I got to teach all this cool stuff and then we got to reenact it yeah exactly <laughs> Whoa. I got to teach all this, like, oh no great stuff <laughs> <laughs> anyways getting very far from the subject <laughs> um what's your guys' favorite console oh man and pc can count i guess so, but so like talking like all yeah like, yeah like all across, all across all like yeah, across all this, time yeah so like Nintendo and then being specific about which Nintendo which Nintendo console PS, or Xbox blah, blah, blah. which version of the Xbox PS and what number you know yeah PS what number you can't say PSX it's not until 2035 right <laughs> 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 so well, I have mine. for me oh yeah. for me mine's easy because it's the one I have the most memories attached to the GameCube. Nintendo okay. GameCube. I, Solid. Yeah, I mean, I love playing like PC games. I love like strategy games on PC. The PS2, I spent tons of hours on like you know Star Wars, Battlefront, mm-hmm. all that sort of stuff. But honestly, the same. A lot of yeah. my childhood memories are like playing GameCube games by myself, playing GameCube games with you. Yeah, Zach coming over to my place like, and playing Time Splitters, playing Def Jam Vendetta. Oh gosh. Like we have so the, many hours. The, Super Smash Bros. Melee. Like we played all of those growing mm-hmm. up. Whatever. Like I have Mario so many Kart fond memories. Yeah, oh, like, the rage we used to get at each dude, other for like, Mario Kart. GameCube Dash. was the goat. Mm. Yeah, uh, I would I would say PS2 uh, is is the final answer, but literally like a a point zero zero one is like GameCube, but but P- PS2 yeah. is my favorite. PS High nostalgia. It, I yeah. so it was Final Fantasy, it. wasn't it? We'll talk about that. We'll talk about my dad turning <laughs> into a whale. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Different, oh, different tavern invoke, talk. We'll get there. I hope um, I hate that you invoked that memory in my head. Uh, <laughs> favorite console for me, I'm, I'm gonna go like PlayStation Three. Um, and yeah. it's a little bit weird. No, but, Three's like, a good one. No, yeah, three's like, a good one. That was where I started to actually get friends, and we would play online. <laughs> so like, bro, yeah. <laughs> bro, I'm, I mean, fair. My hey. backstory is tragic. Okay. Let's just be real. Cool. Um, all right, red or blue? Oh, I'm sorry. Favorite mythological beast. Wow! We just jumped from what? two color choices what to you... favorite mythological. The colorblind guy just said red or blue. Man. <laughs> yeah. and then he just went. Oh wait, hold on, not that <laughs> mythological creatures. So I'll be honest. Bro. I'll be honest. Okay, when I make these questions, I run them through my wife real quick, right? And sh- and she'll be like, she'll be like, do this, this, that, and like, yeah, like throw in like a, a silly one, like red or blue, like, and then or mix it up oh. and be like pink or lavender and i'm just like no 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 guy's gonna be choosing between pink and lavender on my podcast it's not on my podcast <laughs> not on my podcast. I, would, I would choose lavender but well i would choose pink <laughs> <laughs> I, well go ahead what would you pick yeah lavender, we're there easily. now is lavender a color i thought it was a scent it's a shade of purple it's a shade, a shade of purple. purple lavender purple it's a shade of purple uh, even i know that type. i don't know purple i guess sure no pink or lavender. Sure, lavender. I don't <laughs> care. You so anyways, oh, all right, man. Man. mythological beast. Go. Favorite mythological creature. Wow, that's a weird one, man. Yeah, it is. So are we talking, so we're talking like cryptids or creatures from myth themselves, like Correct. ancient Greek, ancient Roman, Egyptian Correct. myth, stuff like that. Yeah. Including thing, cryptids? Right? Yeah. Including cryptids. Yeah. Okay. Because like MetaZoo gave me the idea for this question. Really yeah, like... I was going to say, yeah, MetaZoo kind of helps with that a lot in terms of that degree. Um, For me, I would have to say favorite mythological creature, um, the Dover Demon. Okay. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Gosh, I really don't know if I have one. Like, You can say Mothman. It's okay. You can say Chimera. He's kind of right there. Oh, I mean... <laughs> Mr. Injured Cold himself. Yeah. Yeah, I really don't know. I guess, I guess werewolf. Okay. And, and okay. Only, and the only reason for that is just because like the the guy who did the art for Scythe, also did like the guy who created that universe for <clears> Scythe, <throat> also created another universe that's like knights versus werewolves. Mm. And that one and like the art, okay, that's the art, cool. the art for that yeah. is like striking. Yeah, but see, that's kind of cool. that's probably the only reason. Honestly. Um. So, this is really weird. 
Um, but uh, little, little no lie, little little gray aliens. Oh, the grays. Like grays. Yeah, the grays. Okay. I. That's all. They're equally so. So there's mind you that we we could actually play this because it's on Steam. Uh, not to get off too to- too much of off topic or whatever, but there is a game that uh, literally you go into like a farmhouse, like because you're going there to help someone, and legitimately, they're like a like abduction thing is currently happening at the house and it, it oh, is terrifying that but sounds like, terrifying bro we have to play it but the reason why i like them is there's little like it could like depending on how you're thinking about it they can be little dudes that are like, <laughs> like, like little little dudes running around or like I hate that i hate or, that so much <laughs> or they could be very scary people like sure. whatever and i just think they're ugh, sorry cool <laughs> You almost Austin died there. Died <laughs> my, no, my throat just went like closed up for a second. I was like, "You know what that is? <laughs> the aliens. That's the grays. They're yeah, they're, they're, it's just like you look up there at the window. They're, they're, they're watching. Like, <laughs> you can just see them peeking. <laughs> <in>. <laughs> 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 oh, that's so funny. Yeah. Isabel's uh, not of this world. Oh, yes. oh my gosh. No. Um, so like, mine is Hydra. I just like I've always. Okay. Oh, yeah, Hydra's Hydra's are dope. They will be. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. When you cut off one head, two more emerge. Oh, yeah. No, 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 not that high. <laughs> um, all right. <laughs> so I'm gonna skip past like the either or questions kind of thing. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. And go straight into like the deep question for everybody. Because uh, last time we did a deep question, it took like ten years to go through. No, not so. Well, long. Yeah, but uh, well, I'm curious though. Like, what other? All right, all right, all right. Give real, us like one or just, two. Real, real, real everybody, quick. everybody, just quick as you can. Yeah, as quick as you can. Inside or outside? Outside. Inside. 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 Uh, movies or dinner? like a date movies. yeah as a date as movies. a date uh dinner you can't talk to in a movie dinner dinner uh early worm or night owl night owl night owl night owl night owl that was i think uh, night owls. sword or shield oh. <laughs> sword i guess sword shield shield 100 percent. okay Bruh. we could argue so this. we beat them first <laughs> yeah if you could as i beat you with my giant wall of power <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I swing my yeah. tiny thing of metal uh, at you and I go gaga. I don't know. So, I don't know but then I just sidestep and then I just hit you with the pommel and then end you rightly. That's yeah, I don't know if you're going to beat me with your right. glorified what? dinner plate. We'll have to fight it out, guys. We'll get it. We'll get a nerf sword and nerf shield. What was the red or blue about? <laughs> I don't know. My wife like suggested it. Well, red's my favorite color, so that's the easy one for me. All right. Yeah, red or blue, guys? Red. I already said red, yeah. Red. Blue. Whatever. I don't know. Know. <laughs> All right. All right. Last question. If you could choose to be reborn into any anime, which one would it be and why? If you wanted to get isekai where would you get isekai Exactly. Exactly. That's a, that's the question. If you were to get isekai where would you want to get isekai to? Um, is there a lot of terrible? There are places? a lot of terrible oh, universes oh, I know, I know to get reborn into. Go. Thousand percent. Uh, do you? <laughs> So, oh yeah, is that of the last witch? I have two. Oh. Is that of the last witch? Oh, you have two. I have two, <laughs> mainly because one, I'm very passionate about the main character, and I think the universe would be cool. The other one, I just know the universe would be cool, and that would be the universe of that time I got reincarnated as a slime. Okay, stop or, that for a second. When you say this, do you mean as in like in a in a world where these characters exist, or in the just just the world? Like, do you know these characters, or are you like, are you just getting into the world that they're in? Because that is kind of a big thing. Yeah, let's say these characters do exist. They do exist, and everything from their perspective, animes have already happened. Okay. Hmm. Mm, okay. So every yeah. like resolution after every resolution of the anime to a yeah, degree, okay, you show saying. up into that world. Okay, so my answer is still the same then. Okay. So either the world of that time I got reincarnated as a slime, or the world of Trigun. Trigun. Oh. Wow. I love Vash the Stampede yes. so much. He is such a goofball, and every time a clip of him pops up in like my memories or whatever, I just sit there and I go, "That's me. That's literally me as a character. He is just as dumb and goofy as me, and I love it." That's fair. Yeah. Um, both of mine are kind of rough. Uh, one less so than more than, uh, than the other one. Uh, the, the less awful is uh, Cowboy Bebop. Okay. Okay. You know, yeah. Cyberpunk. I love that sort of vibe. Yeah. That's you know. a that's a good setting. Uh, I I mean it'd be absolutely terrible to live in, but uh, but assuming I lived in it in certain circumstances, it'd be awesome. And that'd be Gundam. Okay. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. I mean, sick, but oh boy, <laughs> that'd be rough. Man, that planet coming at me pretty fast. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo, yo, that what? planet what? getting closer. Why that satellite coming up in the sky? <laughs> oh, they're supposed to be up. <laughs> 
Yeah, that's sad, like, getting kind of close, though. That's rough. I know, that's Yo, why is the guy with white hair monologuing? Uh, <laughs> oh so, <God>. so this... <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. We oh, will man. wipe out those who still cling to the earth. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, I am actually going to agree with him. I, I, I think Gundam would be kind of a, a very dark, but yeah. yeah, depending on also which series if you, if you're you going into. Be, if you could be the Gundam pilot, I mean, sure. at least you'd have the skill set to be to take care of yourself. If not, you're just getting hit by a moon. <laughs> you're just going to die. So, yeah, yeah, that's usually what happens. Uh, so if not that, though, i probably do a very, very basic, uh, just my hero. Okay. Just because I, I yeah, I, mean, so I could, yeah, it, that'd it's be literally dope. just anime superheroes. It's yeah. literally you can't really like. Yeah, <laughs> my hero is on my list, and I I had to it came down to two, mm -hmm. and so the first one is kind of a joke, but it's like thinking logically. Mm -hmm. I think it's one of the best ones. It's Konosuba. Yes. Okay. That would because be a cool one. In the world of Konosuba, you can pick up skills and stuff, and it like literally rewrites your DNA kind of thing. So like you learn different abilities. So you can be this, like jack of all trades, mm -hmm. or you could be this dude that walks around with three girls. That people his own people literally thing. compare people literally compare Konosuba as the D and D anime, right? Because you literally like you depending on like in the case of the main character, he's kind of like a blank slate, and he kind of picks up different skills and trades as the anime progresses. He's still like an average Joe kind of character, but he's definitely not like a down and out like oh i'm completely useless in most situations right and then my uh second one is black clover because everybody uh, yes. black clover is like everybody gets powers so oh, like dude, even black like black the clover. most like like bla basic people mm -hmm. have powers yeah or a grimoire of some sort so like i can make any kind of power work for me so i feel like if i got put into that world no matter what i got i would be able to ride with you know yep um yeah. Just don't ever piss off Aspen. Notice, nobody said Berserk. <laughs> <laughs> There's a good number of reasons well, for that. <laughs> and that's the show. Well, uh, that does come to the end of the show, guys. Yep. Um, the thank you guys for watching. God, God, I mean, nobody said Demon Slayer either. Yeah. That nobody said, nobody said Attack Slayer. on Titan. Attack, well, Why <laughs> would you Why? Is that? that? that you no, know, the worlds of Demon Slayer and Attack on Titan both equally suck to One live piece? in. You, at that, oh, I was thinking One Piece. One yeah. Piece I think would be cool. One Piece would be dope. JoJo's. But oh, I, I didn't think about that. Yeah. But the trade-off would this have guy. to be if Fake you're fan. not a stand user. Oh. You don't really stand much of a chance <laughs> well, in that universe. If see. I was mm. a stand user, I'd choose that. It'd be dope. Yeah. It'd, it'd be dope to live yeah. in that world if you were a stand user. I'm not going to lie to you. There are so many times like that someone asked me like my favorite anime, and for some reason, JoJo doesn't pop up, and I've, I've seen it like almost all the way through like four He's or five man. times. Silly man. I don't understand. Yeah, big fan. Well, if you want to be reborn to a specific anime, let us know in the comments below. Or if you want to be born in the same anime, let us know in the comments please, below. Please, please let us know. I'm yeah. so interested. That'd be great. I mean, if you please. watch this video, <laughs> put, a, put a comment below. Um, thank you guys for watching, and uh, have a great day. Goodbye. Peace. Goodbye. Thank you for watching the video. We really hope you enjoyed it. If you guys like this video, make sure you comment below and subscribe to the channel. And also be sure to check out the... You guys smell banana pudding? Oh! Be sure to check out the uh, the Discord and the Patreon too. I'm sure you're going to find it appealing. Again? Yeah. Yeah, Mark. Yeah, it happened again. Thanks for watching. <laughs>